Alpha Omega London, makers of shoes, creator of waves in the fashion industry, introduces the Fashion Vanguards podcast. Our aim is simple, to open minds, listen to opinions, share knowledge and start conversations. Our podcast series unravels fashion's many guises and tackles head on the current issues that matter, getting honest views from the mouths that matter. We at Fashion Vanguards believe it is time to stop talking and make change. The labeling of mental disorders or mental illnesses carries social stigma and negative connotations which prevent us from tackling the issue. In this series, we address the growing concerns of more and more people who are suffering or have recovered from mental ill health within the fashion industry and the creative sector as a whole. Thanks for tuning in. This episode, hosted by the lovely Tamara, serves up a more intimate and candid perspective on the topic. Stay tuned for more edifying discussion and to learn from her eclectic mix of panel speakers. Joining the panel, we have myself, your host, Tamira. I'm a digital content assistant for Primark, a theatre reviewer and a youth mentor. Mira, the founder of Hidden Voices and a journalist for PrivSec. I am Sinead and I am the anti-coach. I'm Kim Noble. I'm an artist, mother, author, and I happen to have DID. And I'm Bobby, Bulgarian designer, dressmaker, and I'm a founder of Common Ground. Welcome to episode four of the Fashion Vanguard's Mental Health Series. The previous episode examined the harmful effects of the creative sector on mental health. In this episode, we take more of a wider view by examining social constructs and their effects on the creative mind. So I think it's quite interesting, maybe if we dive into the social factors, um, so the spaces, whether that's your workspace, um, friendships and safe spaces, what are our opinions on that and what's the importance of, you know, having good relationships in these areas? It's important <laughs> because it's a supportive system in a way. Mm -hmm. So it is very important to have the right people around you, especially living in 2019. There is no real connections, no real friendship. I know everyone are tired of the statement, haters gonna hate, <laughs> everyone just this and that. But it is very hard to build genuine relationships. And especially for myself as somebody that is coming from a bit older generation, <laughs> um, I do appreciate it because I can make the difference between um, the time I was growing up and, and right now. It is a supportive system and you really need somebody um, to just call and talk to. It's very important, your social environment. It's very important, the person that will pick up the phone. It's very important what exactly, what is the foundation of the relationship? Because a lot of the relationships are, let us just go party and have fun and, and, and gossip. But you do really need genuine people in your life. And sometimes you resort to really clear your circle. I myself went from many friends to just four. And I'm very happy with it. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely identify with that. I think when I was younger and my, my career was starting out, everything was my career, my friends, my social life, my work. It was all one entity. And now when I'm up, now where I am now, my job is my job. I like my co-workers, but I don't invest everything into that. I have that very small network that I trust with my life. And I know they'll be there kind of forever. And I don't have to worry about the noise that goes on with, like you said, the drama and the chaos and the gossip. I'm over that. I don't need it. <laughs> and I think it's really important that you know where everything sits in your life. Because obviously everyone's dynamic is different. But to go back to where I was in my early 20s terrifies me with social media added into the mix. I'm so lucky. I've got no photographic evidence of my youth. And I'm forever <laughs> grateful for that. Um, so, yeah. It's very, very different now. Sadly, I can't say, I say the same about the photograph. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, it's, it's very, it can be very draining because we are dealing with a lot of energy vampiring, if I have to be honest. Because most of the time, instead of receiving the support that you need, People will constantly just go and connect because they need something from you. It doesn't have to be material, but to actually have a relationship with a London busy lifestyle, it's very draining. 
Definitely. And it's quite interesting how you can be surrounded by people, but you can still feel very isolated. Yeah. You know, social isolation is a very real thing. And maybe people don't talk about that enough because everyone wants to be seen as, you know, someone who's friends, you know, mm. the popular person, whatever context that means to you. Um, but you can feel isolated in a room full of people. Just kind of mm. counting down when it was okay to shimmy out the door. You've done your bit. You can you can leave now. Yeah, and I've like I felt that before. Uh, you know, I've been in a room where I've been with tons and tons of people, and I'm supposed to have fun. Uh, but in my head, I'm thinking I want to get the hell out of it. I'm thinking, for once, I feel very lonely, and if it's a weird feeling because it's like I'm surrounded by people. I should be talking to these people, but it's happened to me like twice. And what I chose to do is I just left because I know that it wasn't going to do me any... It was just bothering me more and I was getting more, like, getting more annoyed. I was getting more, like, flustered. I was thinking, oh, God, like, I'm not having fun. I want to leave. Everyone's making me feel even more uncomfortable because I'm just... I'm not, like, comfortable. And, yeah, it's social isolation is big thing and people but don't really talk about it. if you're unhappy within yourself, there is no amount of people that can mm. make you feel good. Mm. Yeah, very true. <laughs> That's definitely true. I think being an artist, it's it's very lonely anyway. So you you know you have to make a bit more effort mm. if you want to socialise. You know to go out and you know um, meet people. It's I think it has become. But I think these days people do it via the internet, and then you don't get that true picture of a person because you don't see their body language. You know that you you've got, haven't got that eye contact, mm. and I think that also helps you feel a bit more comfortable and trust a person a lot more than what you're thinking you can trust somebody on the internet when you can't because you can't really see them mm, other yeah. than FaceTime and I think that's where FaceTime has actually got some use as you know with the contact yeah definitely so kind of picking up on your point from FaceTime and the internet what are the other advancements of technology and how has that impacted shaped our modern society and our mental health well, we share quickly, for me personally, the first thing that came to mind was gaming. Mm-hmm. Um, I had a period in which my son was literally addicted to the game he was playing to a point of stealing money so he can supply his need for the game. It's mm-hmm. literally the same thing as you will go and steal money to supply your need for drugs. God forbid. But <laughs> it's, it was very hard time because he was getting aggressive. He was getting irritable. He would not communicate. All he wants to do is to be on the game. So we end up um, having a conversation. Obviously, I will force him. He was still at an age where I could get my way. He wasn't that young, but I could still get my way about (laughs) (laughs) around his 16s, (laughs) around his 16s. But my point is he'll just be miserable on the sofa, depressed. Mm. And I'll talk to him and we will talk. And he will sincerely tell me, I don't want to live in this world. The game is my world. So for me, gaming is a big problem. Now, obviously, we have men that like to do it from time to time but I personally believe that for younger generations if it without control and without supervision for example let it be an hour and a half a day or some pattern to it it can become a problem it becomes their reality I think um, with gaming especially with a lot of younger kids um, it's just it's an escape from reality you can pretend to be someone you want you can be this character that gets to kill all these people and save the planet, or I don't know what it is, what they play. <laughs> but, um, and it's quite sad that they feel like they have to escape reality. Um, my brother's a gamer. He's not addicted to gaming. But I do know that I think he does gaming a bit more because he's not necessarily a sociable person. He's not, he's probably the opposite of me. I love him to bits. He's not weird or nothing like, nothing like that. Or, okay, not that's not weird as being nothing, but you, you know what I'm trying to say. Like, he's very, keeps himself. But I know that he's his true self when he's online. And we do encourage it. it you know, he brings out his personality more. But then it's, it's, it's just really confusing to me how, like, he doesn't want to do this in real life. And maybe that's where my fault is, where I'm not trying to understand what exactly it is that's making him really want to play the game. And I'm th- I thank God that he's not addicted and he knows, like, he needs to study, he needs to focus, because, you know, he's a university student. But um, that's what it is. I think it's an escape from reality. You can do what you want. You can pretend to be someone. And I think that's with everything on the internet, really, with, you know, social media, um, you know, when you're online talking to people you can pretend to be someone else and put out this character that you're not which in a way does help people but also in another way really does have a negative impact 
Yeah, I think for me in the job that I do, um, so by day, apprenticeship successor, by night, the anti-coach. Um, but the technology has allowed us to, so when people are not having like a great mental health day, they can say, do you know what? I can't do face to face today, but actually, can you just send me some work via email? We use a lo- e learning platform, so they don't have to have that human interaction if they don't want it. Um, so it kind of gives you, you know, I can phone my boss up and say, I'm working from home today. I don't need the noise of the office. I don't need to be surrounded by people because actually I'll get nothing done. I'm better off to shut down and do what I need to do. So I think it does have its good stuff. And, and if you use it, for it like its intended purpose because obviously you can manipulate it as well can't you working from home in air quotes um, <laughs> but definitely the job I do the travel I do and everything like that we get to work together as like a collective me and the students and and decide how we're going to use that social media so it can be Skype it can be emails there's loads of different functionalities within that so um and we use it for good which is quite nice because we're really quick to say it's all terrible <laughs> but it but there is that little glimmer of hope that yeah. it works and you know my, my five-year-old has work online so it's go it's not going anywhere mm. it's here mm. to stay <laughs> <laughs> As it's not all that bad but there have to be a balance and Absolutely. what we observe the the majority it's it's just above and beyond i think um tv it's been for a long time but i think what's shown on tv has a big impact on mental health um especially with love island i'm going to say that it's coming out in a couple of days <laughs> i watch love island but i know a lot of kids um think that's what you should be acting like or that's how you should look um but you know people don't show the fact that you know they have people that do their makeup there they have people that send them free clothes there um you know i think now they've stopped showing them smoking because before they used to show them smoking and i think that triggered a lot of people to start smoking especially younger kids so in the last season they actually when they went out to smoke they had to leave the building and it wasn't filmed but um stuff like love island um keeping up with kardashians um you know love and hip hop and all those other reality shows mm-hmm. i definitely have a big impact because people think that's how you're supposed to act or that's how i'm supposed to look that's not the truth you should embrace how you really are Whoever would have thought that being on a reality show was a career? Like when Big Brother started 20-odd yeah. years ago, we were like, who are these crazy people? Why would you go and do this? It's a job. Like, that yeah. still baffles me, the world of influence. But um, I think with the influencer world, I, I'm not necessarily an influencer. I have a lot of close friends who are in the influencing world. I have a lot of support for them because I think people assume... I'm not saying that you assume, but people <laughs> assume you're just taking pictures, uh, easy light work. The reality is it's not. I'm yeah. doing a lot of mm. research on this and I hopefully will be writing an article about it soon. And that's just such a dark side to it. People don't realise which does impact mental health. Oh, absolutely. My friend has to take time off social media. She has thousands and hundreds and thousands of followers and she knows herself she has to take time off because it gets to the point where it's not necessarily the comments that I mean or nothing like that, but... You know, brands are constantly sending her stuff and she doesn't have time because she also needs to work a full-time job. And it's, yeah. she's working in between. And then people have this image where, you know, you have to look nice all the time. But the reality is she's comfy. She likes living comfy. And, you know, stuff like influencing and, you know, that's a big impact. People yeah. always have a negative, oh, you're you're just, that's a career. It's not, it's not really a career, is it? You're not like a doctor or something, but it, it is a career. Yeah. Same with you. Um, I've grown up in the world of mummy bloggers. And it is absolutely a viable career and, you know, it leads to everything in the mental health. I think the worry is that the young, the oh, God, I sound like my mother, um, the younger <laughs> generation haven't got that distinguish between it yet, I guess, and they don't understand the behind-the-scenes stuff because, again, they would see the shiny behind-the-scenes yeah. of the photo shoot and the, not the hours of pitching and the hours of rejection and, and all the other things that come with it. So it's not found that balance yet, I don't think. I think because it's such a new... It's not a phenomenon, I don't think. I think it's here to stay. But, yeah, there's still... It's this new thing that's come up. Yeah, so we, that no one's found the, the balance yet and the understanding of, of the reality behind that they still all think we can be a kim kardashian heaven forbid and i know people that i want to be this i want to be this and i say you know to be an influencer now if you want to be an influencer be an influencer if you feel like it don't expect it to come to you just like that absolutely you know there's people out there that spend a lot of money investing into becoming an influencer you start getting the equipment if they want to do beauty or fashion that means they have to get a studio they need to get lighting they need to get someone they need to find time out of the day to get someone to take photos then you need to edit the photos and I tell my friend, I remember the girl telling me a couple of years ago she wanted to do it and I told her, 
you're going to be have to do something different. I said, I'm sorry, you're beautiful. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, but everyone is doing the same thing now. You're just going to look like an average Joe. If you want to stand out and be an influencer, you need to do something extraordinary. You need to stand out. And I think... I told her, and then when she started really trying to get into it, she was like, Mira, you're right, like, thanks for the support. And I think I needed that because people just assume it's just a quick and easy yeah. thing to yeah. do. And, yeah, like I said, it definitely impacts mental health. You know, I've had friends who are influencers with, like I said, hundreds and thousands of followers who get people that stalk them, mm. people that write progressively, like, horrible hate for no reason. Oh, you, you look like a man. My friend's like, okay. Okay, like, <laughs> and it's always like some 14 year old kid that's writing that. Yeah, it's so true. So it's really interesting. <laughs> I guess at the end of the day, influencers are creative people, they're creating yeah. content. And there is this idea that people who have more creative minds or maybe more in tune with their creativity, because we all have creative minds, um, that they're more likely to, they're more at risk, should I say, of developing a mental illness. Um, but what are your opinions on that? I think we've read and like the mad artist and, you know... The mad uh, genius. I mean, yeah, yeah, you get... I think with me, I had uh, my mental health problems long before I painted. Mm. Um, so, but I, are creative people more sensitive? I don't know. Are they more in touch with how they're feeling? I, I don't know. I mean, I, there's, I think it's, uh, there's lots of questions around... Um, or do they feel freer? They feel freer. They haven't got to hold themselves together to go in to a nine till five job in the mm -hmm. office. Mm -hmm. um, they're a bit more. Um, I think like there's this yeah. idea that if you're in the creative industry, whether you're doing music or art or you know you're doing anything, that because you're so expressive of how your emotions are, it means you're sort of more open to. Um, just I don't know if you, I, I don't know how to. I'm trying to wear this in a nicer way. Like you're more open to. Just letting your like you letting your like side out, and then I think Your people, just, yeah, the man is <laughs> out. Just a quick reminder: you're listening to the Fashion Vanguard's podcast, hosted by Alpha Mega London. Please subscribe on whatever platform you're listening on and give us a review. And if you would like to get in touch, please drop us a message at info at alphamegalondon.com. Enjoy the rest of the podcast. So people assume that, you know, that means you're, you know, you're, that you must be suffering from, you know, mental health mm -hmm. or something. That's not the truth. Like, come on. The reality is people just express themselves because they can express themselves and you should be able to express yourself without people saying, oh, she's big, you know, something definitely wrong with her, you know? I think that's a lot. That's a big um, assumption that's made out there. Yeah, I think sometimes, like like with my paintings, um, because I'm an untrained artist, they they come from my heart. So it's about my life, my experiences, and uh, things like that. So I think when I paint, that comes through. My emotions come mm. through. My experiences come through, and then people can connect without words. They don't have to say, "I'm feeling bad." They can look at that picture and think, "That's how I feel." And I think it. I don't know. I, th I I just think that that's what happens. Well, for me personally, um, and I don't know whether you know. My madness does come out in the paintings because I've got DID, different personalities, mm -hmm. uh, do different styles. So you know, yes, the madness is there, and people could say it's it's because I'm mad that I can create, <laughs> or it could be creative people are mad I don't know <laughs> which way around it goes I also think people can't grasp the fact that you can be vulnerable uh, by letting your side out without having an you can let your side out and your, your vulnerability out without having an excuse and the excuse being you're suffering from mental disorder mm. and I think that's I think what I think is what a lot of people can't grasp um because a lot of people now in this day and age don't want to show their vulnerabilities it's seen as a weakness really it's a strength that you should be sort of showing to people I think that's why there's this notion that people that tend to, you know, you're showing your artwork, people think, oh, you know, they're making an excuse that she's only doing it because you're, you know, yeah, you've got no. DID. But actually, you're expressing yourself and it just happens that, that you do have DID. It, that's, that's right. And I mean, people have said that. She's, she's, um, she's just to make her paintings more known or more famous or whatever, or get more money. So she puts this story that she's got DID on the end of it, which is, is one completely untrue because I had mental health problems long before I started painting. But I think the, the other thing that 
that happens is that people see that when, it was, when I first started to paint, I decided I wasn't going to tell anybody about the mental health, my mental health problems. Then, as an artist, I had to go in and explain about the painting. So a gallery would say to me, can you explain, you know, this painting? Well, no, sorry, it wasn't me that done it. It was another personality. So I couldn't get away without, <laughs> yeah. you know, because I wanted to be acceptable accepted as an artist not as somebody with mental health problems um now i mean to me that you know my painting and my health problems come hand in hand and you know it's um i don't have a problem with it other people may have a problem with it but i i don't anymore so. mm -hmm. but there is the other side also of the creative mind especially when you're a creative person or you are an artist you're dealing with two um paradigms that most people don't really pay attention to you on one side you face a lot of rejection because the way you express yourself is very unique and it won't be understood by everyone and then there is a lot of misunderstanding you are literally misunderstood so mm. it's a hard life when people don't understand you because you express yourself not just because you want to express yourself but it's also a way of you looking to connect to someone that will understand what you feel, that you understand what what this expression is. And it can be hard. It, it has those two, misunderstanding and rejection. So it also really affects your your state of sanity. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, I mean, like one of my personalities um, paints paintings of a, a quite, can be quite graphic scenes of abuse that we've been through uh, the body's been through and some people can accept that others are actually um have called us a paedophile they say that you know you're doing this so that um, other p people can get kicks from them. and you know so we've been attacked when all it is is trying to expose you oh. know what goes on actually um in some people's lives you know and and you know, this day and age, we shouldn't be turning our back on abuse, but people still can't face it. Even to be looking at a painting, that's not realistic. Um, you know, and I get attacked for, you know, allowing the paintings to be done and put on the internet. And yet, if you, you know, a realistic painting, you know, it's not. It's it's bright colours. The personality that does them wants um, everybody to know what can happen, and people should be aware of mm. abuse. But, you know, you still get attacked. And it's interesting because creati creativity is ascribed to a divergent cognitive style. So clearly it's a way how we it's a way how we cope. It's a way how we express happiness, sadness and things that we may not even be aware of. And quite interestingly, Tishla said um, in relation to the fashion industry, but I think it kind of speaks for the creative industry as a whole, that in this industry, people are encouraged to be flamboyant or eccentric. So there already exists a natural accept acceptance within the fashion and fashion world creative world and embracing mental well-being is the next step you know for a group of people who are so flamboyant and so <laughs> you know like this is me take it or leave it we need to be encouraging um mental well-being talking about it more talking about the different ways to cope and not shaming one another mm. one another's see work. with the fashion industry also um it has become very damaging on artists, on mm -hmm. models, on designers, because I personally don't believe that creativity can be defined, boxed up and explained. For me, creativity should mm. be you expressing yourself yeah, and 100%. being accepted how you yeah. are. Mm. What they are doing right now, for you to be created, you have to create, if you have to look this way and you have to act this way and this is what you have to do. Mm. And it actually, it does not allow you to express yourself, but it tells you how to express yourself, which will I, as a creative, as an artist myself, the hardest times in my life was when I was not able to express my creativity because it's part of me and each person has creativity. We express mm -hmm. ourselves differently. Some people are creative with numbers. Some people are creative with um, business. Some people are mm -hmm. creative. We are creative, all of us, yeah. I believe. And I believe that we should all be able to, cre to be creative without having to meet a certain standard because yeah. how can you tell me 
me how to express myself when you have not had my experiences, mm-hmm. have not had my my life, have not had like my my mindset, my vision. It's a vision. We have fashion universities where they are teaching young designers vision, and um, because I worked a lot of them, I mentored a lot of them. I had them to come and try for them to complete their their for example exams. They'll go and pay people like myself to help them, and I'll sit them down and we will talk and I, I will tell them quite frankly nobody can teach you vision it's your vision that's mm-hmm. why you're a designer and the fashion industry have become a, it's it's a slaughter of creativity mm-hmm. absolute slaughter but the art world's like that as well I mean I'm yeah. classed as an outsider because I'm untrained I haven't got you know I didn't go to university mm-hmm. but I'm not I'm you know for me I didn't realize there was these boxes yep. you know when I started painting I just thought some people like them some people won't then it is well, you know, then I read something somebody had written about me and I was an outside artist. And I had to go and look up what's an outside artist. You know, it's an untrained artist. Wow. It's very sad because I come from a country with this mindset and... I am a person that have dreams. I'm a very dreamy person. I'm, I like inspiration and I like to think big and I like to think that everything is possible. And where I was coming from, like... I was always taught that um, I'm not an artist, I'm not a singer, I'm not a designer, and I was. And when I came here, it was it was really hard to break out of the box until I started observing other people. And I don't believe that art should be defined based on university's experience. It's your expression. If I want to dance and the only move I can do is this, I'm dancing. <laughs> Just let me yeah. be. <laughs> <laughs> I'm expressing with- myself. <laughs> I'm a dancer. <laughs> they say you've got mental health problems. <laughs> um, one thing I've noticed is like in within the creative industry, both fashion or, you know, whatever industry is in the creative industry, that it's like, if you're like the one that's out there, it has to be a certain type of out there. And it's like, if you're out there, but you're not this, oh, that's, you know, then it's just like, mm, especially with the influencer world. Um, or even when I've seen, as an Asian, I've seen other Asian girls out there that, you know, they want all this diversity and, you know, they want all these beautiful brown girls out there. You know, they want all this and then they're still not representing. Actually, you know, they've just put in a girl that's in the box. Don't and get that, me started. And, and, it, and it's like, that's what they're supposed to look like. And I'm thinking, well, like, I, I, I know that I'm out there, but you're not selecting me because I don't look how you want me to look. Or And, mm. um, and even with, like, all my fashion is, you know... It's, it's, I'm thinking, wow, you want me to be, you want to get more diverse people, but you're still selecting people that aren't as, you know, how you want them to be rather than actually getting really diverse extrovert people out there. And it's just mm. something that I'm, I'll just drink my tea in peace. I'm just thinking, <laughs> this is so. Uh, yeah, I really feel that we should be teaching our young people. No matter where they are, are they in fashion? Do they want to be accounting identity? like mm. identity and reinforce that you're perfect as you are express yourself however you want because if you think about it for somebody to go and look validation somewhere else they did not receive it at home mm. and I'm saying this because I I had to rebuild the relationship with my son when he came to live with me and it was it was hard it was hard and we had to reinforce that you are you are great the way you are and if if we if we teach our young people identity, okay, if if mom and dad can't do it or mom and dad are not even there because we're observing a society where this year fifty percent of the children that will be born will be raised without fathers in London only. Fifty three percent of them will be raised without a father figure in the home. So some of them don't have it. Um we're dealing with society where the understanding of marriage and parenthood it's very twisted. So even if it's in school, teachers are also figure of respect. I really believe that we should teach them more identity. I think, especially now, society is all about conforming. And everyone is so thinking about... Because they don't want to stand out. They don't want to be the odd one out. They don't want to be the one that is not following what everyone else... You know, there's so much research on it. And it's... Um, 
it's sad that people feel to conform. We should be doing the opposite of conform. We should be standing out. We should. I want people to embrace me. I'm Mira. People need to know me. You know, <laughs> everyone needs to know you individually, not as they're that. Oh, she's part of them. Yeah, there's definitely something going on. <laughs> you said about teaching the kids to be individuals. There was a, a, and I cannot remember the the presenter of a TED talk, but the quote that has always stuck with me for the last few years is that educators educate the creativity out of children. Mm. It's just terrifying. So that it's all coming down to the homes and, and your peers and whoever those children are surrounded with to give that creative spirit and to keep it going. My kid's five and all the creative stuff has gone out of school already. Yes. Mm. And it's just like, how can we help them be themselves and find mm. their identity if we can't let them express themselves unless it's a test? Yeah. So um, I went to a grammar school and it was during A-levels and they did not care for anyone that were doing, you know, who wanted to go to uni for fashion or arts or anything like that. And it was so much... They didn't even... So I did um, criminology from my undergrad. My master's was in cybercrime. When I said I wanted to do that, they didn't care because it was nothing to do with... Uh, law or medicine or engineering and they pushed everyone else and focused on the people that wanted to get into Uxbridge and all those unis mm. and I'm thinking okay like you've literally just pushed up 80% of the people in my year because what they don't want to do the ones that you think is you know amazing you know what's really funny my best friend is an influencer mm -hmm. and she her, my school used to be like you're not going to do anything well in your life you're going to be just sat there and all doing this you don't come to your exams and really just sla like was so mean to her. They were so yeah. horrible to her. But my friend, she's like, I don't really care. You know, let them think. And then I think I'm looking at her now, and she's going to Ibiza next week. You know, and she's, <laughs> and she's doing so well. She's done graphic designing for Paper Magazine, all these magazines. I'm thinking, you know, if the school would embrace the fact that she was really creative, yeah, you know, you would be coming more. You would the school would have so much more positive thinking, more, you know, people won't be ashamed. People wouldn't think, oh, I have to go to uni just to do really, like, strict subjects. Well, the reality is you can go to uni to do whatever you want to do. Exactly. And yeah. that's just something that I've experienced. I've just been like, wow. Definitely, yeah. I was originally planning to do psychology and I switched it for fashion, media, marketing. I feel like I just learned so much about myself and just and the world and society and identity was all linked into that. And it's quite interesting So I think that society does fail to nurture the creative mind from school upwards it's kind of like when you're doing the creative subject it's like oh okay oh that's nice nice so, little leisure yeah I've little little activity. <laughs> yeah. do you it's think hobby it's there. failing to nurture or it's actually a system to control yeah oh yeah deep. definitely I love that. <laughs> because the fashion industry the money they make if they can control create crea creative mind mm -hmm there will be no comparison, there will be no competition. So if the fashion industry requires you to be in this university to teach you vision, you're going to go and give the money, you're going to take the student loan. And it, it is actually a way of controlling because nobody wants you to have your own mind, your <laughs> own creativity, your own confidence, your own zone. They want you to be a certain way, especially with young generation, because what we do not understand is they are tomorrow and they are a gateway to the future. Mm -hmm. And if we don't nurture them now, they will be controlled and pushed by somebody else. Mm -hmm. what, and it's bad on every level. What's really like even more messed up about that idea mm -hmm. is that now they want people that are doing degrees and stuff are in fashion and stuff, you know, mm -hmm. because, you know, like you said, there's this idea that if you want to get to have your vision, you need to go to uni or you need to go to do certain courses and stuff. OK, well, that, you know, the whole thought of that is a bit crazy. But then now they will only select and hire people that have done it on their own rather than going for uni. And, you know, it's just really like you want us to spend money. You're you're clearly out there making people want to spend money to go to uni or do degrees but then you're not even selecting them you're selecting the people that haven't done that and broken from the norm but sh yeah but surely if they if they take from the ones that have been to uni and they've all had the same lecturer they've really got the same sort of work yeah. and mm. so they're not original so mm, yeah. Yeah, I think if people are left to their own creativity and um, without being lectured then it's yeah. all coming naturally it's all raw it's all fresh and it's all unique yeah okay. teach them entrepreneurship mm. teach them how to mm. be their own business people teach them how to manage finance nobody yeah. does that why because mm. they want them to get credit cards mm. 
<laughs> Stupid names. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> if yeah. you don't know how to yeah. manage your money, you're That's gonna so end true. up getting a loan. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. oh gosh, it's so true, and it's so it's kind of looking at how all of this attributes to the cause of mental ill health. How you're saying what was the word you used again when I said it fails to nurture, but you said like how it's trying to confine us control. Control it's exactly. Control. So how this control. Um, and it's affecting us. And maybe it's those creative people that want to get um, out as well that are struggling from according it. According to research um, that was done in the beginning of the year, one of the main causes for suicide amongst men was debt. To conclude, we've identified the external social pressures such as technological advancements and how it impacts mental health. Isolation seems to be the common denominator in areas such as gaming and the use of the internet, which could potentially be causes of mental ill health. Furthermore, we disproved the concept that creative minds are more at risk of developing mental illness by looking at society's need to control and conform the individual and group. Please follow us at Alpha Omega London on Instagram, Facebook and Pinterest where we'll be sharing superb artworks from a hand selection of artists within our network whose pieces depict their feelings on mental health. There you can see works from the incredibly talented Bobby Ray, Brendan Totten, Roa al Mansuri, Stephanie Mikado, Patrick Gerard and Clara Catvey. Thank you for tuning in and a huge thanks to all our wonderful panellists. Please remember to rate five stars and subscribe.